हेलो भाई और उनके बहनों आई होप यू ऑल आर सेफ एंड हैप्पी सो टुडे आई एम विथ आई आर सी थर्टी सेवन टू थाउजेंड एटीन विच टॉक्स अबाउट द गाइडलाइंस फॉर द डिज़ाइन ऑफ फ्लेक्सिबल पेमेंट लेट्स फर्स्ट टॉक अबाउट द फ्लेक्सिबल पेमेंट वॉट आर द फ्लेक्सिबल पेमेंट्स फ्लेक्सिबल पेमेंट्स आर द पेमेंट्स मेडअप ऑफ बिटुमिनस दीज आर ऑल्सो रेफर्ड एज एसफल्ट पेमेंट और ब्लैक टॉप पेमेंट सो इन द फिगर यू कैन सी दैट दिस इज कॉल्ड एज फ्लेक्सिबल पेमेंट सो दिस वन इज द फोर्थ रिविजन दिस आई आर सी थर्टी सेवन इज वाइडली यूज फॉर द फ्लेक्सिबल पेमेंट एंड वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट कोर्स एज यू कैन से इन टर्म्स ऑफ द डिजाइन ऑफ पेमेंट्स सो लेट्स गो टू द इंट्रोडक्शन पार्ट ऑफ दिस आई आर सी कोड सो वी आर नाउ एट द इंट्रोडक्शन पार्ट ऑफ दिस आई आर सी कोड सो इन पॉइंट वन पॉइंट वन दे हैव सेट दैट दिस आई आर सी थर्टी सेवन कोड द डिजाइन ऑफ फ्लेक्सिबल पेमेंट कोड वॉज पब्लिश फर्स्ट इन नाइनटीन सेवेंटी एंड वॉट आर दॉट वेर द पैरामीटर्स फॉर द डिजाइन एट दैट टाइम फर्स्ट वन वॉज द सब ग्रेड दैट इज द सब ग्रेड स्ट्रेंथ दैट इज द कैलिफोर्निया बेरिंग रेशो and the second was the traffic that is the number of commercial vehicles so what type of commercial vehicles only which were having the weight of 3 tons or more than 3 tons so these were the two parameters on the basis of which the design used to be done similarly in 1984 there was the next revision of this code where the traffic as you can as we already said that in 1970 the traffic was was counted in terms of the commercial vehicles per day that is cvpd but in 1984 the design traffic was in terms of the equivalent standard axel which is of 80 kN this was used for the design and the various design charts were provided for the design up to 30 msa that is 30 million standard axle repetitions so basically we can we can understand that the important parameter for the design of any kind of pavement is the amount of traffic or the vehicular load repetition is the major that contributes to the design of any kind of pavement so these were the two revisions and here they have said that the these two revisions were based on the empirical approach what does that mean that means only by the experience based data we were used to design so let's move to the next point 1.2 so the second revision was carried out in 2001 so here they have used the semi mechanistic approach in the earlier paragraph we have seen that they have used the empirical approach in the 1970 and 1984 version and in 2001 they have used semi mechanistic approach so let's first try to understand what does the semi mechanistic approach means so the another term for the semi mechanistic approach is mechanistic empirical approach so the approach is neither fully empirical nor fully mechanistic it's some way intermediate kind of approach so here they have mentioned that mechanistic empirical performance model for the subgrade rutting and the bottom of cracking so as we have seen in the earlier paragraph that the subgrade strain and second was the traffic but in the semi mechanistic approach they have said that the performance of subgrade in terms of rutting and the bottom of cracking these are the two important parameters by considering which many research have been made and using this research accompanied with the fpo software the design was given as per what irc 372001 version and here the important thing that they want to mention for 2001 version is thickness of chart were provided for the design level up to 150 ms here in 1984 version they have said that the design charts were made up to 30 ms now the more traffic load was taken into consideration for the design so let's move to the third point which talks about the third revision of the irc 37 now here the first thing first improvement was design was done for the traffic volumes more than 150 msa next the utilization of the various pavement materials for example rap that is recycled asphalt pavement modified binders were also considered and third utilization of the new techniques these were the three points which were newly introduced in the irc to irc 37 2012 version another thing that should be noted in irc 37 2012 version they have also introduced the fatic criteria for the cement treated bases so we will see what does mean what is the meaning of cement treated base so for now we'll keep it aside now let's move to the next point 
Now this IRC 37 2018 that is the fourth version that we are currently discussing. So what does this includes or how it is different than the previous version. So here they have mentioned that the silent features which are the different from the previous versions and how the improvements are done. So obviously the improvements are always done on feedback received on the performance of the payments which were designed as per the previous previous versions. So the, here there are the some fact uh, some features that were newly introduced. You can go through this all these things. I don't think this is much important. So we will move to the next point and in 1.5 as usual they have mentioned who were the dignitaries or the personals who were involved in the making of this draft this draft of the IRC 37. So this is not the important point as far as the design is concerned. So let's move to the scope. So this is the important thing. So always before using any kind of IRC code we must know what is the scope of that particular IRC code. So here in short whatever they have mentioned in first para I will say this particular IRC code you used for the traffic which is greater than 2 MSA. That means for the road which have the traffic more than 2 million standard axles. So for that only this particular IRC 37 2018 version is to be used. And now you will ask what if the traffic is below traffic is less than 2 MSA. So here this IRC code have mentioned the reference of IRC SP 72. So for the low traffic volume you can refer to the IRC SP72 for the design of bituminous pavement and for the road where the traffic is more than the 2 MSA we will be using this IRC code that is IRC 37 2018. Let's move to the next point that is the design principles of this IRC code. So in the point 3.1 they have mentioned that the detail procedure the design procedure in detail is supplemented in the appendix A. So so we should refer the appendix A which is attached to this PDF. So in the next para they have mentioned a very important line that the philosophy of pavement design involves the design designing pavement for the satisfactory functional and the structural performance of the pavement during its intended service life period. So here they have mentioned in simpler words that what does the design of a particular pavement means. In any design part we should always understand that we must design in such a way that the satisfactory levels of the of that particular product though it may be any kind of good or a pavement should be in terms of functional as well as structural performance throughout its intended service life period. What does that mean? If we are designing particular pavement for a period of 15 years or let's say 20 years so within that 20 years all the functional as well as the structural requirements for a good and a stable pavement should be satisfied even at the end of 20th year from the construction period. Here they have also said that performance of the pavement is explained by the performance model which are either purely empirical or the mechanistic empirical. We have already seen in the introduction part that the IRC 37 1970 and the 1984 versions were based on the purely experience based data that is the empirical one and the next further advancement or the further improvements in this IRC 37 code were done on the basis of mechanistic empirical that is semi mechanistic approach where the distresses and the performance were also considered as a integral part for the design of a pavement. So in 3.2 they have mentioned a very important thing that the linear elastic layer theory has been used for the semi mechanistic approach that is mechanistic empirical approach. And what does this theory means? According to this multi layer system, our pavement is made up of multi layers or the various layers. For example, we can say subgrade, sub base, then base, then varying course, this kind of layers, and the bottommost layer that we call as the foundation or the subgrade layers as you can see in the figure. This is considered to be the semi infinite. Why they have termed it as semi infinite because the thickness of this has been in this downward direction is infinite and above it has some limitations. So it is called as the semi infinite 
layer and all the upper layers are assumed to be infinite in the horizontal extent and the finite in thickness so what does this says this says that this all the layers above the subgrade this all have a particular amount of thickness so they have said that the finite thickness and in this direction in the horizontal direction they don't have any specific measurement or specific dimensions so here they have mentioned that infinite in the horizontal extent so i hope this point is very clear to you and what does the linear elastic theory means and what does the multi layer system means in 3.3 they have mentioned that the vertical compressive strain on the top of subgrade and the horizontal tensile strain at the bottom of bituminous layer so these both thing are considered as the critical mechanistic parameter for the design so the first thing that they have said that the strain at the top strain at the top of the subgrade so this parameter will use to control the subgrade rutting and the second parameter what they have said is that horizontal tensile strain at the bottom of bituminous layer this parameter is used to control the bottom of cracking of bituminous layer so these are the two parameters that that we consider as a critical one so that using the values of these parameters that is the strain at vertical strain and the horizontal tensile strain so using these two parameters we will be designing our whole pavement similarly they have said that for the cement treated base to do not fall by fatigue cracking the tensile stress and the tensile strain tensile strain and the tensile stress at the bottom of cbd are considered for the critical one so for the cement treated base the separate parameters were considered the tensile strain and the stress for the at the bottom of cbd so we'll understand this by using a figure so in the figure now let's understand what 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 were the things that were mentioned in the last paragraph the tensile strain horizontal tensile strain at the bottom of bituminous layer so this is the bituminous layer this is the granular layer that is gsb and this one is the subgrade so what are the things were mentioned in the above paragraph we will again see in this figure so the first point they have said that the subgrade is a semi infinite in the downward direction the subgrade is the infinite and in above it is limited so the thickness of subgrade is considered as semi infinite and the another thing they have mentioned was the layers the layer thickness were specific so this were so the finite layer thicknesses were mentioned similarly this were infinite in horizontal direction so these were the three considerations and in the next paragraph they have said that they have mentioned the two parameters the first one was the tensile strain at the bottom of bituminous layer so here the tensile strain vertically below the vehicular tire impact similarly the vertical strain on a top of subgrade so as you can see the top of subgrade so the vertical strain so these two were the parameters that they have mentioned in the above paragraph which were which are to be considered as a critical one so the first one this vertical strain on subgrade is used to see the rutting failure of the pavement and the and the horizontal strain is used to see the bottom of cracking so these two parameters are very essential for the design of the flexible pavement as far as irc 37 2018 version is concerned so i hope you understood all the uh, all the things that i have mentioned in the paragraph 3.1 3.2 and 3.3 so let's move to the 3.4 so here they have discussed about the rutting what does the rutting means so the rutting within the bituminous layer is accumulated plastic deformation in the layer due to repetition repeated application of the traffic loads so what is the rutting rutting is the failure that is caused by the repeated application of vehicular load so here in the in this image the ruts have been shown on the roads which are present longitudinal in direction so i hope now the image of the ruts or the concept of ruts is now clear to you the remaining part of this irc 37 will be discussed in the next video till then stay safe stay happy thank you